In this video, we are going to talk about the constitutive activity. This is a model of partial agonist. There is one inactive form, dr, and an active form, dr star. And there is an equilibrium between them, and only dr star will generate the response. But in the real world, the system may have a response even though there is no agonist in presence. The receptor can shift to an active form without the presence of the agonist. And the active form of the receptor also can generate the, the response. So here we have a R star. R star will have a response. The intrinsic activity is the same as that of the R star. And there is an equilibrium between R star and DR star. So we have a square now. There are four reactions going on. We have to define the rate constant. Between R and DR, the rate constant is the concentration of D over KD. Please note that the rate constant is on the right of the arrows. That is because it is the rate constant of the reaction going from R to DR. Between R and the R star, we have a rate constant called KR on top of the arrows. On the bottom, we have alpha times KR. This KR is the same as the KR on the top. On the right, we have D over alpha times KD. So what is alpha? There are two horizontal reactions. These two reactions are similar because they are the reactions between an inactive form and an active form. So the alpha here is to differentiate the rate constant of the top reaction and the rate constant of the bottom reaction. If alpha equals 1, these two horizontal reactions are basically the same. And we will see this in a minute. So the receptor can be in four different forms in this system which means the equation of state of RT equals R plus R star plus DR plus DR star. Two of the four terms will generate a response. So Q, the response, is made up of two terms, A times R star plus A times DR star. To derive the final form of this Q, you have to do the derivation in two steps. The first step is to isolate R star, meaning that you have to change every term in this equation of state into R star and D, plus other constants, KR, alpha, KD, and so on. In step two, you have to isolate DR star. This is a full derivation I did. I won't go into detail in this video, but you can take a look. In the end, the final form of the response is like this. Three things we have to worry about. First, what is EC50? So EC50 is this term. It's a fairly easy question. The second question, what is the constitutive activity? So the keyword of this video, the constitutive activity is the activity of the system when there is no agonist. In other words, it is the response when d equals 0. You can substitute d equals 0 into this equation, and you have a times rt times alpha kd over 1 plus alpha times kr. And on the bottom, you have alpha times KD, 1 plus KR, over the same denominator here as this. And you can cancel out this. So what you have is A times RT over 1 plus KR. And now you can see the constitutive activity is determined by KR because A times RT is a constant in this system. The bigger the KR, the smaller the constitutive activity.
the minimum value of Kr is zero. In that case, the constitutive activity is A times RT. So what it means by saying Kr is zero? Look at this part. When Kr is zero, all the receptors are in the active form because Kr equals R times R star. The third question is, what is the response when D goes to infinity? You have to be familiar with the concept of a limit. We can multiply this term on both bottom and top of the equation. So we have A times RT times K times RD plus D alpha KD 1 plus KR plus 1 t plus alpha k kr times d. So when d approaches positive infinity, this part will be negligible. So we can consider this 0. Also, this part will be 0 when d approaches infinity. And the coefficient of d on the top is 1, and on the bottom is 1 plus alpha kr. So the limit of response when d approaches positive infinity is a times rt times the ratio of the constant 1 over 1 plus alpha kr. So when you compare this and this, there is an extra alpha in this graph here and here are the constitutive activities, one of which is 20, the other of which is 80. The level of the constitutive activity is determined by Kr, and the Kr is the ratio between R over R star. So on the top, when Kr equals 4, R over R star is 4, and 20% uh, of the total amount of receptor is in the active form. So that causes the response. In the bottom graph, Kr is 0 0.25, meaning that 80% of the total amount of R is in the active form. In either of the two graphs, all the curves start from the same constitutive activity, but they end at different response level. So the value of this term is different in different curves. There is a special one, g. So g is when alpha equals 1, meaning that these two responses are the same. So when alpha is less than 1, you will see this term is less than this term. Because they are in the denominator, this response will be bigger than this response. So when alpha equals 1, these two terms are the same. When alpha is bigger than 1, you will see a decreasing trend on the plot. So the take-home message for the constitutive activity model is that you have to know how to calculate kill initial and kill final, and you have to know what role alpha plays in the level of the response.